Well, very good evening to you all. Um, I hope you understand my English. I'll do the best I can. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I've, I've learned over the years to uh, try and appreciate American introductions. As an Englishman, they're hugely embarrassing. Uh, we're used to basically being very cynical about each other, and we build each other up and then we knock them down. So when we, when we come to America, it's like, you really mean it, don't you? So <laughs> you genuinely think we're really, really good at what we do. So thank you for having me. Um, I want to talk to you briefly about, I think, the thing which changed my leadership the most, because my character and personality is apparently one of the least emotionally intelligent growing up of all the types. I married a saint, and uh, for 10 years in our marriage, we kind, of, uh, we kind of lived more or less on the same island, but we often missed each other. And somebody, I think, out of desperation, sent me away to do a couple of courses in Myers-Briggs and Fire OB. And it was like scales came down from my eyes. It was like, wow, no wonder I annoy people. <laughs> Apparently, not everyone is a slightly less perfect version of myself. <laughs> Apparently, the world was not created purely as a stage for me to perform and for me to entertain wherever I went. And the reality is this, right now we're in the midst of one of the most significant cultural changes for nearly a thousand years. There's a little university near where I live called Oxford that some of you may have heard of, and it's been going since 1096. History, by the way, is the only thing we can beat the Americans at, by the way, now. So I'm going to play that card often. For a thousand years, or 950 years, the whole world really has functioned on information transfer. You went and sat under the most learned professors you could, you took as many notes as you could, you went to tutorials, you answered exam questions, you did your best to prove that the information they taught you, you'd mastered, and you took away, if you're anything like me, in little colored files that went into your office that form this great repository of this knowledge that you'd accumulated during your career at university or college. And what you did with that information was because no one else had it, you could then use it to earn your money and be entrepreneurial with it. But the world has changed and it will never go back. Google and Wikipedia have not only moved the goalposts, they've moved the entire stadium. Because whereas before, information and your IQ or your skill sets, your knowledge, your hard skills, was enough for you to succeed in the modern world. Right now, information is free. Everybody has access to information. And if you are going to differentiate yourselves as entrepreneurs in the 21st century, you're going to have to learn more skills than purely the credentials you carry. And the skill, I believe, will be the most important and the most significant is actually the capacity to establish, develop, and maintain long-term relationships with your clients and with those who work with you and for you. And that is a huge shift because for years, your intelligence will be enough to get you by. You do what you're told because you can't get it anywhere else. But we're moving into an age where the capacity to connect with people, the capacity to be present with people, both physically and emotionally. Apparently, I was very poor at this. I wasn't aware of it at the time, but I was only interested in interesting people, and I apparently didn't hide that fact. <laughs> and I was also perfectly possible as an entrepreneur that was dreaming ideas the whole time to be physically present, but emotionally absent. It was possible in conversation for you to be looking at me and wondering where I was or what my brain was doing. And so I offer to you what we call the core of 21st century leadership. 
I don't know how many of you have had personal trainers. Uh, horrible. I hate them. They're always working on my core, which is rather larger than it used to be. Because they say that basically that is what prevents me getting backache, tight hamstrings, and other things that go wrong when you reach my age. And the core of leadership, I believe, for the 21st century for entrepreneurs is this. Your IQ and your skills are essential. But you have to develop your emotional intelligence, your capacity to connect with people, your capacity to be present with people, one-to-one, -one, small groups, larger audiences. How do people know you care? And a greater sense of self-awareness. What's it like to be on the other side of my leadership? What's it like to be in my team? What's it like to be an employee? What's it like to be a client of mine? And those three interlocking circles of your IQ, your EQ, and your self-awareness will allow you to build the relationships that as entrepreneurs will allow you to succeed, not just in the short term, but the long term. And as everything else moves, and as information becomes more and more available to everyone, that, I believe, is the competitive advantage which will differentiate you from the competition. Because you know how to build relationships that last, relationships that are genuine, and relationships that are built for the long term. And that has probably been the biggest rock for me of learning how to grow and sustain business with people, with relationships. And if you do that, everyone will love you.